Hi friends, today we're going to be talking about No Son of Mine, the second single from the Foo Fighters' latest album, Medicine at Midnight. This single was released a few weeks ago, and if you want to grab the sheet music for this notation, there's a link in the description so you can go and grab that. If you want to see a full playthrough of this track with the notation and each section illustrated, you can have a look at this other video that I've made just for the playthrough of the track. This video is going to be focused on teaching you step by step, section by section, how to play the drums for No Son of Mine. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this track is at a tempo of 125 BPM. I'm going to be teaching you everything at 95 just to slow it down and clearly show you what's going on. We'll have the notation on screen as well. So let's get started with the intro. Okay, so the intro is very simple. It's literally the hi-hat and the bass alternating. You're going to be playing the bass on every beat and the hi-hat on the off beats. Super simple. The transition at the end of the intro is the same for the first half of the bar, and then we play bass on the three, we play snare high tom, and then two floor toms. And we can keep the bass going on beat three and four as well. So the transition out of the intro into the bridge sounds like this. Once more. So we're now into the bridge and the first main groove of this track, which is fairly simple. We're playing the bass on the one and the four, but we're delaying it on beats two and three to the E of the beat. So if we're counting two E and a, we're playing it on the two E and on the three E. Uh, otherwise we're playing one and four on the bass. We're still alternating with the snare. So the snare is on the end of every beat. So just the bass and the snare for the bridge groove sounds like this. We're then just going to add in some crashes. So we're going to crash into that and then we're going to add a crash on the second snare of every bar as well. So the final groove for the bridge sounds like this. So the transition from the bridge into the chorus is basically just on the snare. We play five snares on the and of three and four E and a. So that transition sounds like this. So now we're into the chorus. The chorus is a very similar groove to the bridge, but we're actually delaying the bass on beats two and four this time. So we're playing one, the E of two, three, and the E of four. We're keeping the snare regular. Uh, so that basically sounds like this. There's then a transition into the second half of the chorus, which again is the same as the previous transition with the five snare beats, but we're not crashing on the second uh, snare hit in this bar. So the chorus with the transition into the second half of the chorus sounds like this. So into the second half of the chorus, the groove is the same. The only thing we need to worry about is the transition at the end, which is three floor tom hits. So that line sounds like this. So we then go back into the same bridge groove that we played earlier, and at the end of this line, we play a transition into the verse. 
So let's play this line, the bridge and the transition at the end, going into the verse, that sounds like this. So then we're into the verse and we start off with a tom groove, which is why we transition down to the tom at the end of the bridge there. We stay on the tom to play this groove. We're going to add in an open hi-hat to that next on the last beat, so that will sound like this. And for the sticking, it will differ for you, obviously, because I'm a left-handed player playing open-handed on a right-handed kit. So find the sticking that works for you, but this is how I play this groove. The transition into the second half of the verse is staying on the toms, but we go snares and toms, and then we transition to the snare part. So the transition at the end of the first part of the verse, that last bar there, sounds like this. So into the second half of the verse, we're basically playing the same groove as we did in the bridge, delaying the bass on beats two and three, keeping the snare going, adding a couple of crashes. The transition at the end then is six snare hits. So that last line of page one of the notation, again, if you haven't grabbed it already, link in the description for the notation. That last line of page one sounds like this. The start of the guitar solo is fairly simple. We're going to play the bass and the crash to go in. We're going to wait until the next bar and the three and the four to play bass and crash together. But on the three, we play floor tom and on the four, we play snare. We then wait a bar and a half and play a little roll onto the floor tom to beat three and then switch over to the snare for beat four. So that sounds like this. Another bar and a half and we play the same as we did at the beginning of the guitar solo, three and four. We then get to the fill, so we're playing 16th notes with one little pause after the first phrase. The first phrase is two on the snare, four on the high tom, one on the medium tom, and then we pause to get back to the snare, and then we play two, 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 two. So the first part of the fill sounds like this. The second part of the fill is where it gets interesting. There's a lot going on in the drums and I haven't transcribed that part because I honestly don't know exactly what's being played. But the timing is the most important thing for me here. And when you listen to the track for the first time, you'll be thrown off as to where the one is because there's a bar of two four after the first two bars of the fill. So the fill is two bars of four four followed by a half a bar, so one bar of two four, and then we crash into the bridge. So the timing for that sounds like this. After the guitar solo, we go back into the bridge and then we transition into the pre-verse, I've called it on the notation, which is the tom groove again. So if you remember, we did play this. We're going to modify that a little bit and play the first beat on the tom as well, but we're not going to play the hi-hat for the first three bars. We're going to bring the hi-hat in on the fourth bar and then loop that bar another, what, six times. So we're going to go into the pre-verse just on the toms, no hi-hat. On the fourth bar, we're going to add in the hi-hat, so that's going to sound like this.
So we crash back into the chorus after that and we play the same chorus groove as we did before. In the middle of the chorus this time, there's a bar where we play a double stroke roll on the snare while playing three, the and of three and four on the bass. So that sounds like this. Back into the main chorus groove, and then to finish off the track, we are gonna play another run down the drums. This time we're gonna play the bass on all four beats. We're gonna be playing five snares, one high tom, two medium tom, then four, two, two, four, two, two. So it's five, one, two, four, two, two, four, two, two. And actually, we're going to play the last two beats on the floor tom, the bass, and the crash simultaneously. So we play this. So there you go, that's my transcription for Foo Fighters' No Son of Mine on drum kit. Again, if you want to grab the notation, the full PDF is in the link in the description. You can jump around with the time codes in this video as well to learn each section at your own pace. Hope that's been helpful. If you've got any ideas for future videos, anything else you'd like to see transcribed, or any ideas for what's played in that second half of the fill to this track, I would love to hear from you. Please drop a comment or send me a message. Otherwise, have fun on the drums and I will see you for the next video.